This episode's brought to you by Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Dan for a special offer and stay tuned after the video for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle and this is my review for Abigail, one of the new releases available in theaters this weekend. Abigail is the latest from directors Matt Bettinelli, Olpen, and Tyler Gillette, collectively known as Radio Silence, and they've been on a hot streak since 2019's Ready or Not, which I really enjoyed. They followed that movie up by reviving the Scream franchise in 2022, then directing the follow-up Scream 6 in 2023. And I think that Paramount's decision to not wait for them to be free before moving on with the next film in the Scream franchise was the first in a series of, let's say, questionable decisions that I think could actually put the future of the Scream franchise in jeopardy. We'll see what happens with the next movie. Regardless, though, I think that it's great to have two filmmakers like Radio Silence in the horror genre that are consistently making good movies. Guy Busick, who co-wrote Radio Silence's last three films, returns as co-writer alongside Steven Shields, and Abigail is a one-night bottle movie movie as a gang of kidnappers is locked in a mansion to watch a young girl named Abigail whom they're holding for ransom. But as their 24-hour lockdown wears on, it becomes obvious that these kidnappers are in for far more than they bargained for. Joey? Yeah? I'm sorry about what's gonna happen to you. If you've somehow escaped the marketing for Abigail, if you don't know any more than what I've already told you, then I'm gonna go ahead and stop here and just say that I'm recommending the film, and if you trust that recommendation, maybe just go see it without learning anything else, without watching the trailers or reading anything about the movie, because Abigail is one of those movies, kind of like Fresh back in 2022, that I wish I had been able to see at like a midnight showing at a film festival where I didn't know what the concept of the movie was. That's how it was with Fresh. I was lucky enough to see it at the midnight part of the Sundance Film Festival, and I had no idea what the movie was about. And as it unfolded, I was so happy that I didn't. And I think that Abigail really works best if you don't know what the big turn of the movie is. But because of the realities of marketing and the fact that you have to sell the movie to people, then that is revealed in the trailer along with a lot of the big moments that I wish I didn't know going in. That's the whole art versus commerce thing with the movie. You have to promote the film with the hook because you want people to show up and see it. But if you're willing to take my word for it, then go see Abigail without knowing. And I'd also love to know what your experience was not knowing what the movie's really about, because I think that it would play completely differently if you're lacking that little bit of knowledge. Now, if you have seen the marketing for the movie, then I'll go just a little bit further in this review and talk about the fact that Abigail is in fact, and this is the last chance if you don't want to know what the hook of the movie is, a vampire. And she soon sets to hunting down each of the kidnappers with explosively bloody results. Abigail is played by Alicia Weir, perhaps known as the lead in Matilda the Musical a couple of years ago. And if she didn't work, the movie wouldn't work. Luckily, she does work. And I'm not talking about just looking scary with vampire teeth and makeup and stuff. Just about anybody can do that. The performance works because Abigail as a character has to be scared and innocent for the first third to first half of the movie and then crazy evil and manipulative in the second half of the movie. And both of those things are obviously in Alicia Weir's wheelhouse. There's a monologue at a key point in the film that would be a lot of work for any actor, really. It feels like it's about two or three pages of unbroken dialogue, but Alicia Weir is able to sell it. And because we buy Abigail as a character, we buy Abigail as a movie. And it was a really, really impressive performance. I think that she was a smart casting choice. I imagine this was not an easy role to find the right actor to play. The kidnappers who are given code names matching the Rat Pack are also a talented ensemble led by Melissa Barrera as Joey, the team doctor and the most compassionate of the crew. Dan Stevens, who always just seems like he's having a good time, plays Frank, a New York tough guy who sees compassion as a weakness. Catherine Newton plays Sammy, the group's rich girl gone bad hacker. William Catlett plays team sniper Rickles. Kevin Durand plays the dim muscle man Peter. And the late Angus Cloud plays stoner wheel man Dean, all of whom are overseen by Giancarlo Esposito's Lambert, the guy behind the guy who sets the rules and leaves the team to it. Keep the doors locked. And the girl isolated. See you in 24 hours, my lovely pack of rats. 
that's pretty much the entire cast in the movie, and it's because, as I said before, aside from an opening sequence, Abigail pretty much takes place all inside one mansion over the course of 24 hours, and it would have been easy to make all of the kidnappers bad people, and then the movie is just about, well, how are these people all going to get killed by a vampire, which would have been an interesting movie, but not quite as interesting as this movie is. You actually don't actively root for all of the kidnappers to get eaten. Some of them are protagonists, some of them are antagonists, others are comic relief who are just doing their job. Making the kidnappers actual characters makes the movie interesting. Just watching a bunch of villains get hunted down for an hour and 40 minutes, like some sort of Home Alone movie cranked up to 11, would have gotten a little boring. And this movie is definitely not boring. One of the things that elevates Radio Silence's horror films is that they have style, and Abigail continues that trend. Director of photography Aaron Morton, who also did great work on The First Omen, which came out just a couple weeks ago, embraces the mansion's lights-out aesthetic and gives the film an almost sepia quality, which emphasizes the few times when crucially important sunlight is allowed to penetrate the house. And production designer Susie Cullen, who's worked mostly in TV up to this point, also does a great job with what turns out to be a sort of fun house with interlocking rooms, trap doors, and secret horrors that keep things fresh as the kidnappers learn more about just who and what they're being stalked by. While I did enjoy Abigail, my main criticism is that it felt like Radio Silence was falling back on some of the things that already worked well for them in Ready or Not. The fact that the movie is all set in a mansion and you're being stalked through this mansion, even some of the blood and gore effects are reminiscent of some of the most memorable moments from Ready or Not. While I do still think that Radio Silence are incredibly talented filmmakers, I do hope that they push themselves just a little bit more in their next movie because I would hate to see them pigeonholing themselves this early in their career when they really are making waves in the genre. I love a bloodbath as much as anybody and that doesn't make their work ineffective here, but I think they've wrung just as much blood as they can out of the creepy mansion concept for themselves as filmmakers, and maybe it's time to move on to something else. The cast is the elevating factor for Abigail, with Barrera serving as the cornerstone of the movie. She's the compassionate one that we need to care about as the film unfolds, with Stevens as the unrestrained chaos that makes things fun. Neither of their characters are 100% wrong in their approach, but neither of them are 100% right either. And it's that weakness in the middle ground that Abigail is able to exploit as the movie goes on. I also enjoyed Kevin Durant's performance in particular. When I saw that he was playing another tough guy crew member, my mind immediately jumped back to Kimi, his sociopath from Lost. But his character is much more gentle and sensitive and funny than I expected, and I think it was smart for him not to fall back on a part that was so much like one that he already played to great effect many, many years ago. Even though I felt like Radio Silence was returning to some familiar ground, I still think that Abigail is a solid horror film that borders on horror comedy and should be a great crowd watch should people turn up to see it. And I hope people do turn out to see it because one of the frustrating things about the box office downturn post-COVID is that so many people, and I've seen it in the comments, write it off to the fact that, well, Hollywood's not putting out any good movies. Hollywood is actually putting out good movies, and I think that Abigail is one of them. This is a great low to mid-budget movie that should be able to succeed in the marketplace because you don't need $200 million at the box office in order for it to succeed, and yet I worry that it's going to struggle to find an audience because the marketplace has been so destabilized. The talented cast is really what elevates Abigail solidly into its good status. It's quite a ride if you know what's coming, and I think it's even more of a ride if you don't know what's coming. And I'd love to know what you thought of the movie, whether you knew what it was about or not. Also hitting theaters this weekend, and here's a little kind of micro bonus review, is Guy Ritchie's The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, which I also went to see yesterday, and I enjoyed. I just didn't think I really had enough to say about it to merit a full review. It's a good crew heist type movie. It's based on real historical facts, and I like the cast, particularly Henry Cavill. I just wish that he could find projects that are the break out hits that he deserves. But beyond the fact that, you know, I liked it, I just didn't really have that much more to say. So for a quick rating also of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, I would put it on the upper echelon of it's fine, bordering on it's good. If you don't have anything else to see this weekend, you could certainly do a lot worse. 
So that's my review of Abigail and a small bonus micro review of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. What are you planning to see this weekend? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I'm going to thank the sponsor for this video, Miracle Made. This episode is brought to you by Miracle Made. People put all kinds of thought into how and when they sleep, finding that perfect balance of too tired or not tired enough. But do you know what one of the biggest impacts on sleep quality is? Your own temperature. And if you find yourself waking up with the night sweats or shivering under the covers, I recommend checking out Miracle Made Sheets. Miracle Made Sheets are designed to keep your body temperature at the right spot for you. Their silver infused fabric was inspired by NASA to regulate your temperature, and they're also incredibly comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. And as a bonus, Miracle Made Sheets are also made to prevent up to 99.7% of bacteria growth, which means they smell better and you can keep them on longer. Go to trymiracle.com slash Dan to try Miracle Made Sheets today, and whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code Dan at checkout, you'll also get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle's so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Dan and use the code Dan to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com com slash Dan to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Thanks to Miracle Made for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned right here on the channel. Probably later today, I will be jumping back into the world of Rebel Moon, the second film from Zack Snyder. Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, I believe it's called, is now up on the streaming service. I'll be watching it and reviewing it here later on the channel here today, and I've got some other stuff that I'm planning to do this weekend. Thanks so much for spending part of your day here with me as I review Abigail, and stay tuned for much more later. Until then, stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.